السلطات السورية تقوم بتحقيق دقيق لمعرفة مصدر إطلاق القذيفة التي سقطت في جانب التركي وأدت إلى سقوط ضحايا حتى الآن التحقيق لم ينتهي التحقيق الرسمي لم ينتهي والحكومة السورية على لسان السيد وزير الإعلام عبرت عن تعازيها للضحايا ولعائلة السيدة التي استشهدت في القصف وللشعب التركي لكن هذا لم يكن اعتذارا هذا كان تعبير عن التضامن مع 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 المدنيين التضامن مع هذه السيدة وأطفالها والتعاطف مع هذه المأساة التي لحقت بالعائلة التحقيق لم ينتهي بعد السلطات السورية تقوم بما بما يجب أن تقوم به نطالب الجانب التركي أيضا بالقيام بنفس الشيء وهذا كله قائم على وقائع يعني هناك مجموعات مسلحة تهاجم المواقع الحدودية السورية على الحدود السورية التركية وهي كلها أمور تجري أمام ناظري حرس الحدود التركي والجيش التركي فالقصة واضحة تماما للجانب التركي وهم يعرفون تماما ماذا يجري على المعابر الحدودية وكيف تقوم بعض المجموعات المسلحة من حين لآخر بالهجوم على هذه المواقع الحدودية السورية على الحدود السورية التركية وبعض هذه المجموعات المسلحة عندما يطاردها الجيش السوري تلجأ إلى داخل الأراضي التركية فالصورة هكذا بكل وضوح هذا هذه هي المعطيات التي تحيط بالحادث الذي جرى أمس. Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today's Friday, October fifth, twenty twelve. I'm Darko. I'm going to cover a lot of different news, a little bit of Syria, a little bit of Iran, because I've been covering a lot of that. I'm going to get into Libya and other places as well. Hopefully in the next video I'll be able to get into the economy, maybe some eugenics. But a quick note on that video that I just showed, uh, Siri did not apologize to Turkey. I got a, received a comment on the, one of the GGN videos in the comment board, and they said, uh, man, you're an idiot. They, are, they already apologized. And I guess he was going off what I was saying in the, yesterday's video about Turkey supposedly apologizing for Syria. And uh, they were basically expressing their condolences, and I wanted to clarify that. Then this video came out after all of that, after I put up those, posted those videos. So I kind of confirmed what I said. I mean, that was an official from the Syrian government saying, we did not apologize, you know. And uh, so then he wrote in his comment, uh, when I posted that link of, you know, facts and sources, he comes back and says, you need to look at it again. Well, I don't speak Arabic, so maybe, you know, the transcripts were, the transcripts were wrong, the subtitles. So... But either way, the links will be posted in YouTube's video description. U.S. wants to see Syria, Turkey going to war, says the Iranian commander. This war is what the U.S. wants, and the officials of the two countries, Syria and Turkey, should move towards non-interference with each other's uh, affairs in order to see peace on its borders. And I also I also find it kind of interesting that uh, Syria's representative he did it very tactfully. What he said, he basically said Turkey he didn't he could have just went and said. Uh, that uh, the result of this mortar shelling was the same insurgents, mercenaries, uh, Free Syrian Army rebel terrorists, that they were just caught. I showed this in yesterday's video from a Lebanese journalist. They were caught stockpiling weapons, handing out weapons, keeping fresh um, stockpiles of weapons to the rebels to go back over the border. So Turkey's aiding terrorism, and then they're blaming Syria. So they could have just came out and said that. But they said, no, you know, you know what's going on, Turkey. You know what's happening. Then we have U.S. favors Syria-Turkey conflict, says Webster Tarpley. I would urge them, the Turkish government, to find a way back and to pull back from this. This is not in Turkey's interest, and if we get a conflict between Turkey and Syria, the one who is laughing will be the United States because they will have disposed of two countries that were resisting the imperial dictates coming from here. Tarpley also noted that if Turkey would simply say that we are going to close our borders, we are not going to allow these killers to use our bases inside Turkey, this would come to a rather quick end. The one-year mandate authorizes military operations in Syria if the Turkish government deems that it's necessary. They're talking about the Turkish parliament who approved a motion on Thursday authorizing military operations outside the country's border when deemed necessary. Then Erdogan of Turkey says their country is not far from war with Syria. Those who attempt to test Turkey's deterrence, its decisiveness, its capacity, of much of blah, 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 right? I say here they're making a fatal mistake, he warned. We are not interested in war, but 
were not far from it either. Well, his own people protesting, says uh, protesters march against the war in Istanbul as tensions with Syria escalates from October 4th. So you can go in there and check it out. There was thousands of anti-war protesters late Thursday night. Among the slogans written on the signs and banners carried by protesters were, This war is not my war. No to imperialist intervention in Syria. And we will halt the AK party war politics. And we won't be the soldiers of imperialism. USA, take your hands out of the Middle East. Meanwhile, the Israeli Defense Force intelligence preps for Assad's demise, weakening of the Syrian administration of influx of jihadists poses a new threat to Israel, military intelligence chief says. So this is confirming what I was talking about, uh, going off what the uh, Brookings Institute report about Syria and that, uh, you know, the think tanks, how they're going to have a pincer attack. You know, they got uh, the Turkish, Turkish border going on, and then you have, uh, you have Israel and Golan Heights now, uh, starting to flame up and Israel acting as if again like always we're being attacked we're, we're gonna we're gonna get attacked we're under attack so we better go on the uh, we better go on the attack right so they're talking about a bunch of uh, people that were seen out in the desert they actually evacuated people in certain areas of Israel so part of the report as far as getting a regime change um, is what they want that's why I'm saying uh, the demise of Assad that's what the goal is is just try to squeeze them and pressure them get enough to factions and stuff like that. Uh, House committee says security requests denied in Libya. So now we're on to Libya. Despite two explosions and dozens of other security threats, U.S. officials in Washington turned down repeated pleas from the American diplomats in Libya, including the guy that was killed, to increase security at the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, where the U.S. ambassador was killed. Then a report says the United States knew al-Qaeda was behind the Libya attack within 24 hours. So yeah, within 24 hours of the 9-11 anniversary attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, U.S. intelligence agencies had strong indications that al-Qaeda-affiliated operatives were behind the attack and had even pinpointed the location of one of those attackers. Then an attack in Libya disrupted major CIA operation. This is some news that went under the radar from the 25th of September. I've been holding on to this article. The September... According to the New York Times, at least half of the nearly two dozen U.S. personnel evacuated from the... City of Benghazi, following the fatal attacks on the consulate and a secret annex, were CIA operatives and contract. They were conducting surveillance and collecting information on an array of armed militants uh, groups in and around the city. They said, we got our eyes poked out. It's a catastrophic intelligence loss. Well, somebody knew about it. We just covered that, right? Then we have this one. U.S. deployed special forces across northern Africa embassies ahead of Benghazi. Advanced teams were deployed months before the attack. So the Obama regime continues to insist, the face of mounting evidence, the contrary, that there was no way there could have ever been, uh, could have ever been seen that the attack on Benghazi consulate was coming, yet they clearly saw something coming. So I don't know if you remember from yesterday's video, I was saying that when they sent those Marines out there, um, uh, after the attack, right after the attack, they dispatched like 50 Marines to Libya. That was kind of a big deal. And I was like, I wonder if they were like Marine recon or something like that. But what they had there, um, these special forces, and you've got the links in the article here, it was actually Delta Force, Army Delta Force, that were there prior to the attack, and then they sent Marines. But I don't think this is what what everybody thinks it is, as far as just a lapse in, uh, ju uh, in judgment or uh, in a loophole in intelligence, you know, something gone wrong, right? I think, I, think, I hate to say this, but I think almost 99% of things that happen, happen for a reason. They're, they're allowed to happen all the way from the top. And even people, you know, up there with, the uh, you know, higher uh, intelligence uh, clearance, security clearance, higher than Obama, uh, probably doesn't even know that, you know. Uh, but it says here, U.S. withdrawals all personnel from Benghazi. No U.S. government employees remain in the city three weeks after the attack. They uh, basically said they pulled every single government employee out of the city, well, except for the uh, CIA and the Marines and the Delta Force and stuff like that. So they withdrawed all the personnel. Then document caches remain unguarded and attacked at Benghazi Consulate. U.S. left compound unguarded for weeks. So what the hell is going on here? They just up and run and abandon it? That doesn't make any sense. You know, the biggest uh, police force, military police force in the world, you know, the biggest intelligence complex in the world. I'm sorry, this wasn't a mistake. They're pulling out. This was to create some kind of vacuum. That's what I think. Libyan leader says at least 10 militias disbanded. Libya's leader says his government has disbanded about 10 militia groups and will continue to take action against the Muslim extremists. So then I found this article, of course. Uh, this is living and hiding from Libyan militias. 
So they're talking about um, too afraid to give their names and allow their pictures to be taken, uh, talking about showing scars crisscrossing his back, cigarette burns on his arms and bones in his left hand, which uh, failed to heal properly when it was broken by a Libyan militiaman. They said they live in fear, and now they become a victim of militia brigade who control his local neighborhood through fear, intimidation, and extortion. And the same groups, Libya's jihadists to cry, Western meddling and post-Gaddafi governance. Many of the rebels in Libya, formerly NATO's freedom fighters, continue to embrace jihad and denounce foreign meddling. And from October 3rd, 2012, we have Libya's pro-NATO coalition cut out of cabinet. The pro-NATO coalition cut out of the cabinet in Libya. Prime Minister says cabinet aims for a geographical balance. As Libya's pro-NATO National Forces Alliance won the largest plurality of any faction the parliamentary elections, 39 seats out of 80 possible for a party candidates, the win was trumpeted as a big move towards a secular pro-West regime at the time. But it says here that the NFA has found itself cut out entirely in the un incoming cabinet. They reported they weren't given a single cabinet post. So then I saw this article, Libyan Parliament rejects proposed cabinet lineup. They said the government didn't represent all sectors of the regions of the Libyan society. In other words, those that were pro-Western, I guess. I don't know. They said it was thrown together arbitrarily and on the basis of friendships or sex, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Israeli minister Persian Spring on its way. The foreign minister said the Arab Spring will be followed by a Persian Spring with international sanctions against Iran leading to renewed domestic unrest. Instability spreading in Iran, not just Tehran. I remember that uh, I think it was James Baker with Hillary Clinton in that video laughing, joking about getting a false flag going, and he was talking about how the, the sanctions are working. They're, 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 they're squeezing. Well, they're squeezing the average person, the people at the top there that are probably the puppets for the globalists. Well, they're eating well, and they're, uh, you know, they got all the recruitments and that, but the people at the bottom are the ones that are getting screwed. But that's the point, right? That's the point of uh, creating a Persian spring and destabilizing the country. EU is poised to agree ban on Iranian gas imports. The European Union uh, is going to ban imports of Iranian gas as part of a set of new measures to ratchet up the pressure on an Islamic Republic or its nuclear program. So there you go. And, a naval up and for a naval update, there's T minus one week until Arabian Sea destination is reached. It says it will be noise until these two catalytic events occur, the third U.S. aircraft carrier and the second big deck amphibious warship, the Pelulu, uh, both dispatched as of several weeks ago with the destination. The fifth U.S. fleet headquartered in Bahrain reached their target in the Arabian Sea, located by the Strait of Hormuz and next right, right next to Iran. Conveniently so, with at least two weeks ago until the presidential presidential election. Once in location, a naval and airborne support for offensive operations, especially those launched during the new moon cycles, will be simply suffocating. Then Israeli forces storm a mosque and disperse Palestinian warshippers. At least five people, including two photographers, were injured after Israeli troops intervened and fired stun grenades. It's been tense over the past week, and on Thursday, at least nine people were arrested after Palestinian worshippers and Israeli settlers clashed inside the compound. And many of you are aware that they're sending another flotilla. It says, Free Gaza groups as Zionists ran concentration camps. They said here the Zionists operated the concentration camps and helped murder millions of innocent Jews. So whether they said this or not, whether it's true or not, it's a good way to call them, what, anti-Semites, right? Instead of just calling them anti-Zionists who did actually benefit uh, from all of that and getting their own country, their own state. U.S. targets Lebanese charities over Hamas links. The Obama regime is imposing sanctions on two Lebanon charity uh, charities, it says, that are controlled by Hamas. So remember that. And just remember, they uh, just removed sanctions for child soldiers. The Obama regime did. That's for the Africa African front. Uh, they had uh, al-Qaeda moved from Yemen into Syria, covered that recently. Also, the U.S. removed MEK Mujahideen, Iranian opposition group, uh, from the terrorist list. Officially, U.S. adds jihadist Yemeni group to terror list. That's another one on their list is Yemen. AAS or Ansar al-Sharia. The crazy thing is there's a lot of, like, there is, like, grassroots militias and stuff like that. and maybe extremists, but they always link them to al-Qaeda. It's an offshoot of al-Qaeda. And that's sometimes, I think, what they do to, to basically co-opt something which may be legitimate so i'm not agreeing with them but al shabaab they're fighting against western imperialism in somalia and then in yemen they're fighting to get southern secession so they want to stop all of that and tunisia's in a state of emergency thank you